Andrew and Mike, it took six hours before school board members provided clarity for parents and students on the upcoming school year. School buildings will be disinfected daily using UV technology and fogging. Today, Mike, the mayor and the Air Force Base's colonel say they're heartbroken by this incident. So I'm going to run you down some of the facts. According to the colonel, personnel responded at 4.30 this morning to a deli shooting inside a dormitory. Two active duty dorm, uh, airmen were killed. It just started at around noon. As you can see behind me, they're marching yelling justice no peace our photographers gonna pan out and show you it's a wide array of people here um, obviously from different races different ethnicities here to support uh, uh, George Floyd and we've had live coverage all morning I got here at about 9 30 and the crowd started showing up about 10 30 I move out the way now so my photographer can show you the entrance of the Ralph Engelson arena as you can see they're parked in front of the arena is the car of Cody Holty um, the fallen Grand Forks police officer that we're here to honor the life of despite the rain people are planning to show up right here in front of the federal courthouse in Fargo for a candlelight vigil to honor Raven Thompson and so far her father did show up and he joins us live here. And so, Aaron, I just want to tell you, can you just tell us, tell us a bit about what's been going, what you've been going through so far um, since this uh, incident happened? Uh, I've been going through a lot. This is still a very active crime scene. As you can see, there's still crime scene tape. And, there, and the street has been blocked off from 25th Avenue North from 8th Street all the way up to Broadway. And I'm going to flip the camera around so you can get a, a sense of the scene and view of the scene. Mike, I just want to show you, here's some of the snow that's falling out here. As you can see, kind of hard and crystally. But this is the Valley News live car. I just want to show you, this This is half an hour of us not cleaning the wheel shows how much ice has fallen. Look at that. Andrew and Mike, I spoke to people in this neighborhood in Bemidji where the alleged incident occurred, and they say they're taking action to protect their young daughters and granddaughters. Do you have any comments to the former employee and what, the, and what they said, that you were like being a bully, intimidating? It's a harmless panda. It's about the size of a raccoon. If, if you look behind me, you, there's one right here. As you can see, that that's Pepper. Bureau of Criminal Investigation is looking into allegations made by two teenage girls that a North Dakota volleyball coach made them feel uncomfortable and at one point kissing one of them. He's now out of a job. In this exclusive story, Valley News Team's Joshua Pagero joins us in the studio with details on the investigation. Joshua? Brian Christensen was fired on June 10th from Oaks Public Schools and is now under investigation by the BCI. I filed a number of records requests for school documents detailing two allegations against a 50-year-old assistant volleyball coach. On June 3rd, an 18-year-old former student reported that Christensen made her feel uncomfortable. She says he would slap her butt during volleyball practice. In a recent incident, she says he invited her out to his barn one late Sunday night in April. The girl says while in his pickup, Christensen began rubbing her arm, torso, face, and shoulder, and then kissed her on the forehead. A 17-year-old girl also came forward saying Christensen invited her into his office to ask her about her sex life. She also says that exchange made her uncomfortable. Christensen sent a letter to the school last week where he says he disagrees with statements both girls made. He also says numerous details of the school's investigation were left out. He ended by saying he's sorry this happened and he apologized to past and current athletes. Mike. All right, thanks, Joshua. We did reach out to the Oaks Public School Superintendent. We have not yet heard back from him. Later on Valley News. Callum Bjorgum says he spent six months employed at GPK Products in North Fargo. When he first spoke to us, he was in quarantine for two weeks after he says he was exposed to COVID-19 at work. Uh, they're worried about money and losing customers, and I understand that, but uh, we're worried about our lives. Bjorgum says he quit his job at GPK on May 29th, citing a lack of efforts by management to protect employees. I spoke with the Human Resources Department and voiced my concerns, and uh, they, they told me that they, didn't, they weren't forcing anybody to come to work. Anyone could quit at any time. He says his wife, who still works there, is leaving Friday after almost four years. GPK Products does pipe fitting. Vicki Putney reportedly worked there for 35 years. A family member told Valley News Live the 66-year-old got COVID-19 at GPK and died on May 31st from the disease. According to the state, there are more than 9,000 people employed at manufacturing plants in Cass County. That represents a third of all manufacturing employees in North Dakota. A big employer in Fargo is Case New Holland. Case New Holland employs people from Valley City to Detroit Lakes, you know, Hillsboro, Wapaton. I mean, so if there was an outbreak in the plant, 
that's a lot of communities that could get affected as well. So. Jeremy Pearson is a union representative for plant employees. Pearson says Case has done some good things, such as staggering start times, but they have ways to go. No one's ever seen something like this before, right? So it's not, there's no template for it. You know, what we're trying to do is just, let's just be considerate and do the right thing. He adds some case employees have also been laid off for nine weeks. In Fargo, Joshua Piguero, Valley News Live. I've never, ever seen my dad cry before, and that was the worst day of my life, was watching him cry over Zoom and not being able to hold his hand. A Minnesota family is challenging a Fargo hospital's policy against allowing visitors. They contacted our whistleblower hotline saying their loved one is undergoing emergency surgery after being diagnosed with stage 4 colon cancer. Valley News Team's Joshua Pagaro was there as they were holding up signs determined to get inside the hospital. Rachel Safar says her dad, Curry Refshaw, is an active guy. Farmer Manoman, he keeps busy. Dad has always been so healthy and just a rock in our family. I never, ever, ever expected this. His family says the 52-year-old began losing a lot of weight and experiencing body pains. It wasn't until a recent visit to a clinic where his family got grim news. And they found that he had uh, a large tumor on his colon, uh, tumors on his liver, and spots on his kidneys, lymph nodes and abdomen. His family says when they dropped him off in the emergency room right behind me on Monday, they did not expect that he would be diagnosed with stage four colon cancer, but also that they could not be by his side throughout this difficult process. The diagnosis was a devastating blow. He He's a very strong guy. He's a fighter and he's trying to stay positive, but he is very scared. Since the coronavirus pandemic, Essential Health has a policy barring visitors from their hospitals. When we question them, they get very defensive. Sanford Hospital had the same rule up until late May when it began allowing one visitor per patient during business hours. Safar says she doesn't understand why Essentia hasn't done the same thing. Mental health is crucial um, in fighting disease and you need your family with you. Health experts say stage four colon cancer is deadly with a short life expectancy. And we don't want anybody else in this situation to go through what we're going through right now. We want other people to be able to see their family members. Safar says her dad always wanted to be a grandpa and late last year she was able to give him a granddaughter. She hopes he's around long enough to see her grow. In Fargo, Joshua Piguero, Valley News Live.